One final note on the red, I uh, mixed up too much obviously, which I thought I would. But if you look at it, if you could see that down there, it's still very liquidy. So I was definitely able to put more coats on there if I needed to. That stuff didn't cure up at all. Again, I didn't put the activator in, so that might be it. But I just uh, wanted to point that out. Now the final step with painting is clear coat. This also mixes up one to one. Supposedly this stuff is very forgiving and very easy to put on. So we'll see. I have to tack down the fender still. I could do wax and grease remover on it. I'm not going to. With the base coat, SPI recommend, recommends using the solvent based wax and grease remover vice the water based. I do have some of that, but I don't feel the need to wax and grease remove it. So I will tack it down however. So looking at the, uh, the tech manual here, you put down, mix it one to one. There's no, uh, no induction time or anything like that. Spray it on for restorations, wait 30 minutes. Spray your next coat. And uh, eight calls for three on here. I'm only gonna do two because I'm getting a little bit short on time. And uh, again, I think I'll, I'll see what I want to see with two, co two coats. Never sprayed this stuff, I have no idea how it's gonna work. It'll be interesting because I didn't really clean the gun meticulously like I will before I spray color and base so it'll be interesting to see if I entrain any of the uh, residual primers or reds or anything else that might be in there it's probably not too pretty I really should take care of that and I will so uh, again a little uh, mixing cup here one to one I'll mix some stuff up and then we'll uh, we'll see how it goes one more thing that I will point out it uh, the tech manual calls for a 1.4 millimeter tip I don't have one for this particular gun, this DeVilbis FLG4, as far as I know, DeVilbis doesn't make a 1.4 tip. So I reached out to SPI and uh, they said the 1.3 will work just fine. As a matter of fact, it works just as good as a 1.4 tip in that particular brand. But you can see right there, that third bullet, never use a paint gun with a 1.3 tip. Use a 1.4 only and it's bolded and all sorts of good stuff. So that made me a little bit nervous, but turns out I should be just fine. Since I've never opened this stuff before, open it together, see what it looks like inside. I bet you it's clear. That's like non-existent clear. That's pretty wild. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna stir it up because uh, even though it doesn't look like there's anything in there, who knows what may have settled out. I know it's a high solid, so there's solids in there somewhere. So I am gonna mix it up, and then I'll mix it one to one. So this clear is pretty thin. I'm gonna, I got that test panel over there that you can see on the left. I'm gonna test it out, but I'm setting up the gun initially just as I would for shooting epoxy. So we'll see here. I'll get this preset up. Start with a turn and a half open on the fluid. All right, so a turn and a half on the fluid was too much. You can see that leftmost one over there. You can see the drip, and then it went to two because it took a while for the drip to develop. And uh, obviously two was way too much, and you can see that's actually running a little bit faster. Then I went to one and a quarter, and that looks like it's okay. Yeah, even that's got a little bit of a drip, so I'll go to just one turn open. Waiting on the uh, time in between coats here. Happy the way that it went down. It doesn't appear that I have any runs or anything like that. But I'll tell you what. You talk about trash in the clear coat. Holy cow. I probably have, uh, I could see 30 nibs, I think, right here. And uh, a good amount of orange peel. So that's something that's all hopefully going to get buffed out and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to play with that. And my, uh, I'm going to take it all the way through buffing and everything. But that just speaks to how clean that I want to have it in here that uh, it's obviously not. So cleanliness is, is going to be paramount when I actually go do this for real. But uh, it looks pretty, that's for sure. I did ask on the SPI forum today, the pot life of the clear, and it's a 30 minute wait in between coats like I mentioned, and the pot life exceeds that. The recommendation I got was you really only want to mix up as much as you need per coat and mix it up each time. 
but if you're going to do two coats, you should be able to use what's left over after the first into your second. Just try not to uh, go much more than that. Here we go with coat number two. There's two coats of the Universal. It's, uh, it's, it's shiny. So the top here, again, I get into the way of this piece of wood. So especially in this corner over here, I didn't have any coverage. And uh, way on that lip, I didn't get a whole lot of coverage. But I tried to, to try to take care to get the bottom here and not have any of that dry spray like I did on the base coat. And it looks like it may have even covered some of that up. But uh, there is a lot, of, a lot of junk in there. So that's obviously something I'm going to need to address. So the next step now is to cut and buff. I'll let this cure for uh, probably a couple days here. Try to get it out in the sun if I can. And then move on, move on to that stage. The more I got to thinking, the less of a good idea I figured it was to just leave two coats of clear on here. Because when I do go to cut and buff, I'm not going to have the mill thickness that I will on my other project. And I could easily burn through the clear here with only two coats, I'm afraid. And that would uh, lead me astray in, in, uh, in what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just over here real quick, I'm going to go ahead and put two more coats on it. I wanted to uh, also point out that the place that I get all my paint from, Southern Polyurethanes, you've seen their cans in the videos. The owner himself gives out what seems to be his personal text or personal phone number on his cell phone. Texted him this morning, told him that I interrupted the two coats. I want to put two more on today. Did he have any problem with that? And he texted me back in probably less than five minutes saying that I was good to go. So if that's not customer service, I don't know what is. When the owner of the company, and I don't think it's that small of a company, gives a response to some guy, some hobbyist in his, in his, uh, in his garage, don't know uh, what he's doing. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a great sign of a, of a great company. So I just wanted to point that out. So two more coats, and then uh, Cut and Buff will be after. Give you a close up what the two coats looks like with the light. You can see the trash that's in it right there. I don't know if cutting and buffing will take care of that. That's one thing I'll figure out when I get to that point. There's not even a whole lot of orange peel in there. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, that coat didn't work out too well. Good number of runs right there. This is where I started. And I think uh, one, I was too slow. And two, I was a little too close. So I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to fix it. Again, this is, a, this is a learning process. It'll be interesting to see when I get to the cut and buff if that, you know, what, what I can do with that with just the uh, cut and buff and the sanding. So I'm actually, uh, actually kind of glad it happened. Four coats down. This last coat didn't come out so hot. Very orange peely, very tight uh, orange peel. I don't think you can probably see that. I'll try to zoom in. Uh, the texture there, it's kind of weird. I don't know if it was the gun or what, but maybe it'll uh, it'll flow a little bit more, but uh, it's still wet. So that's uh, that's it. Four coats of clear. Runs here that I pointed out. Little little set of runs right here. Hard to see, but uh, it is very very nice and smooth. A lot of orange peel. So today we're going to uh, look into getting that cut and buffed, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. This is the jar that had the leftover clear in it, and uh, I usually just pull the paint out and stuff so I can reuse the jar if it's not too messed up, but I'll show you this. It's kind of neat. Pull the clear sticks to the thing here. That's the clear. So, as the name implies, it's pretty clear. Kind of neat. Got all sorts of stuff going on here. This is all going to be for the cut and buff stuff. I'll show you what I got. First bucket of water. A couple drops of soap in there. And a spray bottle. That'll be for wet sanding. This here. This is a nib file. A fine one. And I uh, obviously it's not even out of the package yet. But that'll help get out nibs that are more than just little specks of dust. I would only use this if I was trying to be aggressive to get a nib out. I'll see if I can find any where I can use that. A thousand grit sandpaper. I'll be using this on the block to take care of uh, stuff, the runs and, and things like that that I want to get rid of. 
an assorted thing of sanding discs here. This is a eight hundred all the way up to two thousand, and then a, a little package of three thousand that feels like paper. And then this is the Chemical Guys starter kit that I picked up on Amazon. Of course, I did the warehouse deals. Everything was brand new. I saved probably twenty to forty bucks. I don't remember exactly how much, but it's got uh, came with the cutting pads. The obviously the, the DA itself and then trial sizes of the uh, polishing stuff and cutting compounds. So I expect, frankly, that that all uh, stuff goes relatively far. I'll probably be able to do the whole car with that, which is nice. But uh, I'm going to be using all this stuff today and hopefully cutting and buffing that guy. Sheet of 1000 grit cut in half. I'm going to soak this in water for 10 15 minutes before I use it. It just uh, helps it with its uh, durability a little bit. Gets this paper kind of soaked back here and instead of the paper tending to crack if I were to bend it, uh, it'll more more rounded and it won't uh, leave quite as hard of a line. Put a piece of tape across the panel. I'm not going to cut and buff this side. I'm going to cut and buff this side. One well, that'll make me practice in getting out these couple runs. Biggest uh, reason I'm doing that is because I want to see the difference after this is all done and I figure that's the best way. Now I mentioned the orange peel. The orange peel is really bad in here. Almost none right in this bend here and then it starts to pick back up. Zoomed in on the panel here obviously. And right here, I don't know if you can see it, the uh, camera's not picking it up too well and you got my fat face in the reflection. Cool that I got a reflection though in it. But anyway, right here is a run. And this nib file does say you can use it on runs too, so I'm going to give this one a shot. I got all these runs down here that I've, I've got lots of runs to practice with. But here's the little nib file, and you notice it's got an arrow on it, and that's the direction of use. And then on back here, it's just a little wood kind of uh, carriage. And in here, you've got the little, it's like a file, very, very fine. Doesn't uh, You can't feel any sharpness at all with your finger. And all you're supposed to do is you just put it over top of the imperfection and just rub it in the direction of the uh, defect. So I'm going to give that a shot here. You got a drip here and there's another one right here that this one's really light and then there's a piece of piece of uh, junk in there too. So we'll see what happens here. And you can definitely feel it catching. I don't know how crazy I am about it. It's not really taking it out that much. I don't know how well you can see, but you can kind of see where it's starting to take out the high spots. Really, really light. So that, uh, I think this will work better for me anyway for pieces of dirt than it will for runs. One, it seems like this will take absolutely forever, which I'm not that opposed to, but... I think I'd rather use the sandpaper. There's the run. 1,000 grit sandpaper I've got here on a little paint stick. Obviously I'm zoomed in very far. And it's been stuff that I soaked. And the paint stick just gives me a flat surface, but it's a little bit smaller obviously than a full size block. So I'm just gonna to try to take these this run out here. You can see the, it pops it right up or you can see the uh, the run and then this line right here I think is just an imperfection in the panel I don't think that's a that's a run or anything so I'm not going to really worry about that all right well that was silly I mean if you caught that there that I forgot to put any water on it so that was not very smart. Paper got was getting loaded up, which what reminded me. Camera's really struggling with focusing, unfortunately. But you can pretty clearly see, hopefully, the line there. That's the line of the run. That's what I'm trying to take care of. Get it wet. Sand it down. Wipe it off. Dry it a little bit. 
All right, still a couple spots. There's the camera again. Still a couple spots in there. All right, that looks pretty well gone. You can also see, especially in here, get my finger out of the way so it'll focus. Come on. You can see that the model defect, that's the uh, orange peel, obviously, and that's coming right out with the 1,000 grit. So I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to try to take these runs out over on down here. The, uh, I'll use the same exact process, and then I'll come back when it's, when it's time for something else. Most of that run is gone. There's some right here that's going to be covered. I peeled the tape back a little bit because it was getting wet. Way in here, I left it on purpose. Essentially, this line right here, which is kind of hard to see, but this line right here is where the filler stopped, and that's just into the overspray region. So I'm more concerned with everything in, kind of inside here. So I'm just going to leave this, leave this go. This one's taken care of, so I'm good. Got the runs taken care of. Again, there's still the modeled look from the uh, the cratering. I didn't take care of these over here, if you can see that. I don't know if you can or not. Camera's not going to pick this stuff up very well. But all the rest of that, those runs are out. And that was all using 1,000 grit sandpaper. Now, I'm going to take a, a block and a larger piece of 1,000 grit and block the whole panel out to try to get rid of some of that orange peel. So I know the camera angles aren't that great. The uh, sawhorses the panel's a little unwieldy on here. 1,000 grit sandpaper, regular block. I'm going to wrap this in threes the correct way. Tri-fold it like that and then like that. So what that gives you is a surface here that you can sand with, surface here, and then you flip and then you got your third surface. So it's just a, a way to wrap the sandpaper that maximizes how much available you have to use and uh, you don't have to swap the paper out that much and it also helps keeping it keeping it together. Uh, blocking techniques no different than any others that I've used so far. So we'll see if I can get a lot of this this junk out. So this stuff almost acts like a self-guide coat. You can still see the modeling over here. And that's just where the clear is orange peeled so bad. And then in here, this is just imperfections in the panel. It's almost off camera. And then there's that one mark right there. That's where the Bondo starts. Probably should have made a nice little harder of a line there. But I'll tell you what, if there's any imperfections in your panel, you're definitely going to find them now. Much more so than, than even with just the clear coat before I sanded it. So I'll just continue to work this and, and uh, get that out of there. Same method. Everything's hand sanded out through a thousand grit. You, uh, you can see the line right there for the tape line. I didn't go all the way up to it, but uh, it feels really smooth. This little area in here I'm not going to worry about. And then you've got a real light line here that's from where the, the panel's not flat. And then obviously the real heavy, oh, losing focus, the real heavy line here from where the Bondo starts. Next up, I'm going to go with my DA sander. I've got my assorted sanding grits here. 8, 12, 15, 2000. Obviously I'm not going to use the 8, so I'm going to go to 12, then to 15, then to 2000, and then up to 3000. So we'll see how it looks as I each, each successive um, iteration here. But I'm just using my, my regular palm sander with a interface pad that's a really nice soft foam so that it's compressible. And this is where I, uh, I'm a little nervous because I am going to do it with the DA here and I don't want to burn through the clear, but I am going to burn through the clear at some point just so I can see what it looks like. I uh, got my sandpaper here, 1200. Feels, uh, you can definitely feel it, hear it. And then the 15, now it's feeling smooth. 2000. And the 3000, this is smoother than paper. If I took a piece of printer paper, it would not feel as smooth as this 3000 does. So we're just going to slowly make our way through the grits. Again, wet sanding with the DA sander. 
and just uh, I expect uh, they start getting some gloss back once I start getting into the 3000. We'll see uh, which one I really get it back from. All right, skipping ahead a little bit. Been through the 12 and the 1500. Now I'm going to do the 2000. Again, this is where it's really starting to get smooth. Um, all I'm really looking for is a uniform color here. I don't know how else to determine whether or not I've got all the sanding scratches out. So I'm just trying, like I said, just trying to look for a uniform color. Now I kind of started ex expected to see the shine start to come up, but. Uh, I don't know if I'm not sanding long enough or what. I'd rather go short than long, I think, because again, I'm concerned with burning through, unless I've already burned through everything and there is no color left or no clear left. That'd be, that'd be awesome. So I'm at 3000s next, and then uh, I guess we'll get into the buffing. All right, well, it looks like I cut through in one spot. I'll show you that real quick. Right there, you can see that right on that hard edge so I kind of knew that I would have to be careful in there obviously wasn't careful enough now uh, still still obviously very dull so now I'm going to move up to the polishing compounds and everything and I don't uh, frankly remember if I should start to be seeing shininess or not now so if I if I am then what I have done in my thought is just not allowed the sandpaper to cut the clear as much as I should have and, and just not enough time uh, the, the 2000 you know and up is probably not going to really cut that much but I'll shift over to the buffing buffer and see uh, see if I can get some some gloss out of this All right, I had technical difficulties there so I just lost some stuff but uh, I'll show you what I got for a buffing wheel and compound and all that kind of stuff this is a torque model this is from the chemical guys it's a uh, part of that starter kit, like I had mentioned, 1200 to 4200 RPM. It comes with the buffer, four different polishing compounds, and three different um, pads. This is the orange pad, it's the most aggressive. Then you've got a white, which gets into your polishing pad, and then a black, which gets into the waxing pad. Probably won't be using this at all today. As far as the compounds go, 32 and 34 are your cutting compounds, 36 and 38 are your polishing compounds, more aggressive, a little less, a little less, and, and final. And then when you polish, you just, or when you buff, you just put three dabs of this stuff on here, and then, and then you go for it. One nice thing about this sander or buffer is also that it's a soft start, and I'll show you that here in a second. Now I did already <coughs> use the wheel on the most aggressive one and uh, I'm not too sure how I feel yet it's uh, definitely not shiny at all but it's shinier than it was after the 3000 grit but it's nice and smooth but I'm a little nervous that this is not going to come up but we'll see I still got three more polishing phases to go through the other thing that I forgot to look up is what I do with the orange pad in between compounds do I clean it can I wash it or what else I'm going to look that up real quick Got the foam pad here. I put two little dots of the V of the 32 with the V32 compound on there. I've already done this once. Like I said, I had some technical difficulties and I lost that. So I'm just doing two here. I'm going to uh, put the buffer down and show you how how it goes. I've got my speed set on three. I don't really know what speed to set it on, but I'll put it against the panel. You, from what I understand, you want to start these with them against the panel, and then I'll show you the little soft start thing. It's kind of cool. Also, with the compound, just you want to spread it around the piece, the panel. All right, so here we go. Shine's starting to come out a little bit. 
and uh, a lot of little itty bitty scratches in there. So there's either one of two things. Either I didn't go through the sanding grits with the sandpaper enough or that's just how it is right now and it'll eventually come out. So we'll go to the next phase here, the same orange pad, except now I'm going to go to the V34, which is just a little bit fine of a grit. The other thing that I'm going to need to figure out, and I, and I, may, uh, I may be messing this up here, is I'm, not going to, I'm going to use the same pad. Now obviously, it still has some of the other grit in it. So this may be a mistake, something that I need to look into. I didn't consider changing pads. So this uh, disclaimer here, this, this may not be the right way to do it. Otherwise, same process. So you can see there's still a lot of scratches in there. I don't think the polishing compound is going to take this stuff out. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. If nothing else, just to kind of prove to myself that I'm, I'm, uh, I haven't done a sufficient job up to this point. So I, I think I have a feeling I may have to go back into the into the sandpaper phase, but uh, I need to do a little bit more research and a little bit more study. And obviously, I didn't prepare myself as well as I should have for this. So the same methodology, using uh, the white pad this time and the two other sanding grits or compound polishing grits, whatever you want to call that. A couple of dots on the pad, run the pad around like I like I've already showed you. I won't. Uh, I won't bore you, but I'll, I'll come back after the last one and we'll see what it looks like. So this is through the final buff. And uh, so it, it's, it's crap, but I, I'm happy. One, I'm, I'm very, very happy that I did a practice panel. I can't tell you how happy I am that I did a practice panel. Uh, two, I, I think that even though this is crap, that the uh, that that I'm going to get there, so you can see. I mean, there's just swirl marks everywhere. It's absolutely horrible. So definitely have to spend more time sanding and coming through the grits and and all that kind of stuff. So that's uh, that's definitely where I would go back to. I'm also really glad that I decided to split the panel like this to see the difference. And it turns out that I, I need to split the panel because I need more practice. So I did that uh, burn through. Like I had showed you here, I did burn through that, that little white mark. And let me get you, get you out of the sun here, or out of the light. Where did it go? There it is. That little white mark there, that's, uh, that's the base paint. You can, obviously, this is a white panel. So that's uh, something I'll need to watch out for. And otherwise, that, that generally this stuff had up well. That's the only place, you know, that's on a hard edge there, so I should have known better. But like I said, I'm happy with the, the, uh, the progress, even though... It's it's bad and and a, and, a, and a poor job, but still happy with uh, with how it went. Well, that's it for the series, guys. Thanks so much for watching. A lot of good comments, uh, so I appreciate that. Obviously, I, I need to can't tell you how happy I am that I did and decided to do a practice panel. Learned a lot already, and obviously, I need to learn some more stuff. So I, I need to study on this cutting and buffing. But happy with the way that the paint handled and performed and happy with the way the clear handled and performed and happy with all of my tools and everything that I've got. Now I just got to get the technique down just like everything else. So thanks again. Take care. Cheers.